Hey, it's great to get to review Darren McCroy's World Championship winning speech from way back, but it was a really good speech and it's, and it's generally renowned as one of the best speeches ever done in a World Championship. So let's have a look at it. And this speech has pretty much everything. Let's check it out. Can you remember a moment when a brilliant idea flashed into your head. It was perfect for you. And then all of a sudden, from the depths of your brain, another thought started forcing its way forward through the enthusiasm until finally it shouted, yeah, great idea, but what if you... And there's, there's the move that won him the speech. <laughs> he starts out the speech, great intensity. He's got great eye contact. He's writing the speech, great rhetorical questions. He moves, he uses the stage well, stage well, he goes to the back of the stage, starts forcing his mind his way forward, and then he falls flat. And that's very rare. And again, that's a novelty factor in a speech that will definitely set you apart if you can bring that novelty to your speech from the very beginning. And the fall on the floor is just not a random fall on the floor, it's, on, it's, it's the doom very much with the message of his speech. Fall on your face. What do you do when you fall on your face? Do you try and jump right up and hope no one noticed? Great use of questions, two questions. Are you more concerned with what other people will think than what you can learn from this? Another question. Great message. Mr. the contest, Chair. Here he goes. Right with that gesture. Friends! And the people way in the back! There you go. He won it from that. He's, he's two minutes into the speech. Or, you know, a minute into the speech in a bit. And he's won the he's won the World Championship. Just with that. Be brilliant. That's Walls. And having the novelty of that opening. Ouch! And ouch is a great, great um, word. It's, it's like a, a sensory word that is used for the title of his speech. Great choice of word. <laughs> now look, he's moving off to the left... Did stage. you feel I stayed down too long? No, the hologram is. He's pointed to the hologram, which was himself staying down. Have you ever stayed down? A lot of questions. Too long? A lot of questions inhabit the first part of this speech. After four years of business school, I went out and I went for the American dream. Here we go into the first story. I bought a Subway sandwich shop. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're all impressed, I can tell. I don't want to brag or anything, but in six short months, I took a $60,000 debt, and I doubled that debt. Praise the self Very funny. That's right. I turned Subway Sandwich Shop into a non-profit organization. Yeah, great humorous line there. I financially fell on my face. Again, that theme of fell on my face, yeah. But then I remembered, I was not the only one from my hometown of Auburn to fall on his face. Second story. You see, a hundred years earlier, my childhood hero, Dr. Robert Goddard, Fantastic. had a ridiculous Fantastic. idea about building a device to take off from the ground. Great use of mime. Look, he, he, he's seeing the rocket, and look, his, his, his eyes follow the rocket upwards. Great use of gesture and height. So where his eye contact goes, that immediately brings the eye level of, you know, up, you know, two to three times the height of the stage. Brilliant work. The stars. Gave to the stars. Dr. Goddard was the reason we landed on the moon. And a great reference to history in his speech. I've talked about the micro and the macro. So the micro story is about him. The macro story is a historical story about Dr. Robert Goddard. Very clever. Very, very clever. Now in that now now we have historical context, which gives further validation to his story and the message of his speech. I remember when I had my ridiculous idea. I was listening to a tape of Brian Tracy, a great speaker. Great intensity. He asked a question. He said, what would you dare to dream if you knew you wouldn't fail. Now, believe it or not, that's a quote. So he's quoting Brian Tracy. Now, quotes and statistics are very powerful. And he used a quote right there in his speech. And it may slip past. You may just think he's just 
saying it, but it's a quote. And when you say quotes in your speeches, bam, very powerful. I struggled for an answer and then bing! Bing, great use of, uh, you know, of tone, a very loud bing. And the eye contact, very, you know, funny, the humorous uh, facial expression. I'd be a comedian. <laughs> But you have to understand my background. I wasn't funny. <laughs> I wasn't considered a class clown. In fact, the first time my brother ever laughed at me was when I told him I wanted to be a comedian. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. Great. Recognition of theme. Yep. Who do Ouch. you want to be? What changes do you want to Tons make in your speech. life? So many of us can see clearly where we want to be. Nice use of gesture now. Looking now, he, notice how he before he's looking up at the stars. Now he's looking, you know, across stage to 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 the destination, as if the goal is is to the stage. You know, obviously the audience is stage right. And yet we go back and forth. If I just had a little more time, if I just had a little. More Look at that, brilliant! He's going downstage, upstage, downstage, upstage. Fantastic! While he's pointing in that direction, great use of stage. If, if the kids were just a little older. But we never take that first step. Dr. Goddard's first flight took off in Auburn. There you go. Great use of mind. I could just, and he's looking at the stars, and I know the audience is imagining that rocket and the stars. Absolutely brilliant, Darren. In Auburn. <laughs> It only reached 41 feet, but it was a first step. There are strangers out there, people who don't even know you, who will make fun of your first step. When the local press found out about Dr. Goddard's ridiculous idea to reach the moon and his first flight, the next morning the headlines read, Moon Rocket misses target by 238,799 and a half miles. Again, there's another quote. <laughs> he slipped it in. You know, you slip it under the radar, these nice quotes. Well done. And it's humorous as well. And he, you notice how he does the title. He extends his gesture from here all the way over to here as he does the title. Very, very cool. Ouch! Ouch. Again, repetition with the gesture of the arms out wide. Great use of gesture. But those strangers are part of your process. Again, referral pointing at part of your process, yeah. We also have friends and family that love us and don't want to see us fall on our face. Great intensity, Darren. Imagine my parents' reaction when after stretching their budget to help me through college, seeing me fall on my face and then I come home. Again, he's referring to the hologram on the floor, fall on the face, the body on the floor. Mom, Dad. Change in tone and pace. I want to be a comedian. <laughs> Great facial expression. Hands in pocket, nice different use of the language. And the big super pause, the big pause. I was met by silence. Silence, nice whisper, and that's, wow. Look at that. He, he mimed the use of the word ouch. So we've got the contrast of the ouch, big ouch, 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 and then the ouch. Brilliant. They too Brilliant. are part of your process. Again, pointing, pointing up the stage. Process. After a year of struggling in the comedy world, I'll never forget one night. I was bombing for 20 minutes. It was horrible. So I went for my surefire bit. I brought a woman up from the audience and she stood directly behind me. She put her hands forward in place of mine. It's an old improv technique. She would tell the story with her hand gestures as I would tell it verbally. And it works best the more animated the hands are. Well, this woman stood there like an ancient statue. <laughs> She didn't move. I turned to her in desperation and said, please do something with your hands. She did. <laughs> Ouch. Again, I immediately Ouch. called my mentor, Rick. I said, Rick, I bombed. I died. I died. They hated me. Rick said. Again. Yep. So. Wow, look at that. Great pause and great facial expression and, and humor from that. You mean so? How do you argue it's so? Repetition of the word so, 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 three so's there. <laughs> and then Rick reminded me, every comedian, every speaker, anyone who's accomplished anything has fallen on their face. 
It's part of your process. And then I remembered Subway. I fell on my face, but I never took the next step. It's the step after the ouch that's so important. It's so difficult. And it ties into the message now. Step after the ouch is the most important. So that's the theme of the speech. I like the ouch. We don't want to take that step, but when that foot lands, oh, you are going to like that feeling. Nice change. We learn from the ouch. In an effort to reach the moon, Dr. Goddard said, failures I consider valuable negative information. Another great quote. So that's three quotes for this speech. Information essential to each step getting closer to the moon. Yep, and nice you suggest just up, 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 close to the moon. I am going up. Dr. Goddard. I like his gestures because he punches his gestures out. You know, bam, in and out. An ouch master. Ouch master, very clever. Right? We need to be ouch masters. If you're willing to fail, you can learn anything. I still have my day job, but now in my hometown, in a comedy club, my picture hangs on the wall. But it's because I took the step after the ouch. Yeah, and there's the, the message of the speech, I took the step after the ouch. I wasn't given the gift of making people laugh. I was given the opportunity to take a next step. So will you. What's your next step? Again, the so. So will you. So he's that's the fourth use of the word so. Very clever. I don't know if he did that intentionally, but it does tie back to the, you know, a repetition, an echo. It's almost an echo, yeah, of that previous statement. When will you take it? Take it. I didn't want to look back on my life and think, never did try that comedy thing, but instead, I paid all my bills. <laughs> Great, Jesse. It was funny. We're all going to move forward and try and reach a point, but we're going to reach a point as headed to our goals where we get stuck and we can't move. Great use of stage. He's stuck. He's, he's showing that he's stuck. We're so afraid of that ouch, we forget that if we lean forward and take a risk and fall on our face, fall on our face again, we still made progress. <laughs> So again, the falling on the stage now, it ties into this, and in repeating it, did it at the beginning of the speech, he's doing it at the end of the speech, and repeating it again, re drives home the message about, ouch, you're taking steps, but you're still making progress. Go ahead and fall. Fall forward. <laughs> nice punchy ending. Go ahead and fall. Fall forward. So there's a repetition. Fall Go ahead and fall, fall forward. So there's like an alliteration. Fall, fall forward. Nice alliteration there to, to, to finish off the speech. Well done, Darren McCoy. Did you see that? You're the man. I hope you like my analysis of Darren's speech. Great guy as well. Very humble. Great guy.